3D text. Today I'm going to show you a method that I've used to design for Wu-Tang Clan, Outkast, and a bunch of others. Open up Photoshop and Illustrator, we're going to be using them both. Let's go. What's up everyone? If you don't know me, my name is Fuller Mo and I've been designing for bands and artists for over 10 years. I also run fullermo.com, which is a website filled with design tools that'll help you make better t-shirt designs. So if you didn't know, now you know, and if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Now let's jump into my computer. All right, so we're in Photoshop just so I can show you this end result. This is what we're gonna be creating today, but we're actually gonna start off in Illustrator. So go ahead and jump into Illustrator. And if you don't have a canvas, just go to File, New. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just using the same dimensions of the canvas that I'm using in Photoshop, which are 15 inches wide by 25 inches in height, orientation vertical, one artboard, color mode, CMYK. Uh, just copy all this if you want and click Create. And then you'll have a new canvas to work with. So the first thing we're gonna do is just type out some text. Grab the type tool from the left side, click in your canvas. I'm gonna type out 3D text. And I'm using a font called Latin Wide and I'm gonna provide this in the description below. So you can do exactly what you're seeing here. So once you've got your, um, your text typed out, um, I'm just gonna change the color of it. Here in the fill and stroke um, swatches, I also foreground, background if you're in Photoshop. Um, I'm gonna change it to like gray. So like anywhere in this area will be fine. Click okay. Now the next thing we're gonna do is use this 3D and materials window. If you don't see that, go to window, 3D and materials. With this text highlighted, click extrude. Then we're going to make some adjustments. So the first adjustment we're going to make is clicking bevel on and then we're gonna change the bevel shape to round. Down here, we've got a bunch of adjustments to make and I'm actually just gonna follow um, this text that I've already got done. We're gonna copy all of the settings from this. So I'm gonna highlight that and we can see that the width changed to 100, height to 35. So let's do that here, width 100, height 35. Down here, we're also going to change the rotation. So right here, it's at like an angle, which is cool if you wanna do that, fine. But for this tutorial, we actually need this to be front. And then we need, we need to change the X axis to seven uh, degrees. So now it's starting to look more like this. Let's see what else we need to change. So we've got the depth on this at three inches. So we're gonna change that here. And by the way, at the end of this, I'm just gonna show you all of these just so you can copy it exactly. So three inches, twist zero degrees, taper 100%, bevel shape, round, width 100%, height 35%, repeat should be at one, you know. Um, custom rotation, that's what happens when you click front and then you change it to seven. So yeah, I mean, it looks pretty similar. I think the only thing we need to change is with materials and lighting, right? So this is the new text that we're creating. We're under materials and we're just gonna change this to default if it's like something else. It should just be the default setting. Um, nothing else here needs to change unless like these get skewed, in which case you wanna make sure that roughness is at one. Oops, roughness is at one and metallic is at zero, okay? So again, starting to look more like our example here. Let's keep cruising. Lighting, we're gonna make some adjustments on that, right? So a bunch of adjustments. So on this, we need um, the intensity to go to 100%, rotation, negative 135, height 25. So intensity, 100, rotation, 135 degrees. And then what I say for height 25, softness, I believe we're gonna go down to zero. Yep, okay. Now the intensity of the lighting also needs to change. Click ambient light if this isn't already like checked. Intensity, 70%, cool, all right. All right, so now that we've got our text, we actually need to make a duplicate copy that's just plain like this. So go ahead and highlight your new text, 
hit Command C and then Command V. Make a copy. If you're on PC, you know, it's Control instead of Command. So now that we've got our new copy, just change this 3D type to plain. So that should just make it look like this, right? All right, so now that we've got this 3D text created, we're just gonna highlight it, hit Command C or Control C to copy, jump back into Photoshop, Command V or Control V to paste it in, and I'm gonna use a smart object here. Click OK. So now we've got our text pasted in, I'm just gonna hit Enter, and then jump back into Illustrator and grab this plain text that we also created. Command C to copy, back into Photoshop, Command V to paste, and it should paste it like pretty much right on top of it. If it's a little off, you'll be able to just move it up like that. So then when you click off the plain text, it should look like that, okay? So we're gonna start off using our plain text layer, so double click that in the layers panel. And then if you haven't already downloaded kind of the package that comes with this tutorial in the description below, um, do that now because I've, I'm gonna provide two different styles that you'll be utilizing in this. I'll also like pause on the effects so you can see what I'm doing, but we're gonna first apply this Fuller Mo 3D gloss to this plain uh, layer. And so if you wanna copy these rather than downloading the, uh, the package, that's cool. So go ahead and copy this for Bevel and Emboss. Copy this for Inner Shadow. Just pause the video. Satin. And you wanna make sure the contour is like this as well. You wanna copy all of these effects exactly and then mess around. Maybe once you're done, you can start messing around, but just for this tutorial, copy everything that I'm doing. Gradient is just black and white. Scale, notice it's 115, it's not 100. You can move that down if you wanted, doesn't really matter, but for this tutorial, keep it at 115. All right, then we're just gonna click OK. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually put this um, plain layer with all the effects on it in its own group. So hit Command G, and that's going to put this in a group, and then change the group blend mode to overlay. Okay, so now you can already see that the uh, the you know text is starting to look a little bit more like interesting, right? Okay, next we're gonna work with this 3D layer, so double click that. Again, go to styles, and all we're gonna do here is add a satin overlay. So the only reason I made this um, like a layer style that you can download is because the contour is kind of wild. Um, it doesn't use any of these default contours. So if you want to copy the contour, um, you know, here's the different settings for each stopper. 0, 3673, 5988, 8524, 9856, 173. Click OK. Distance 40, size 128. Sorry, again, if you want, just download the layer style and you can just click that. But those are all the settings for 3D. All right, so now we basically got some silver 3D text. So how do we make this look like colorized, right? So the first thing I'll do is highlight the 3D layer, highlight the group above, which is our you know plain layer that now has like sort of the glossy finish. Highlight both of those, Command G, so now we've got another group, right? So now with this group, we can start adding, you know, some colors and I usually will just use like a gradient map. So go down and add a new um, adjustments layer, go to gradient map. And now that the gradient map is above our group, right click on the gradient map layer, go to create clipping mask, and then click this thumbnail right here. And that should bring up the properties. And then if you click this, um, gradient right here you'll see gradient editor so again here i'm going to provide a nice like gold gradient that you can use so you can just click that and boom now you've got some 3d gold text click ok um you know if you want you can you know i guess mess around with these colors do whatever you want but you know i've made it pretty easy for you with the gradient map there so let's say you don't want this to be gold you want it to be some other color i would add another new adjustment layer and go to hue and saturation. And then again, right click, create clipping mask, and then click this little thumbnail here. And 
you'll have this properties window that has hue, saturation, and lightness. So you can kind of mess around with this, make it whatever color you want. Um, in my opinion, you know, it's smart to try to get used to working more non-destructively just because there are things that can happen in Photoshop. Your text can get messed up, you can accidentally flatten stuff, whatever the case may be. But the more and more you try to work non-destructively on stuff, I think the easier um, ultimately things are gonna be. All right, so I'm gonna change this back to gold and then I'm just gonna group everything together once again and then duplicate the group with Command J. Now with this top group, since we already have another copy of it here, with the top group, I'm going to right click, convert to smart object. So now that we've got our smart object, I'll go to show transform controls at the top, and then I'll just click this box. And then up at the top here, you'll see what I just call like warp mode. Basically it says switch between free transform and warp modes, click that. And then under warp right here, go to arc lower and then change the bend to negative 20. Now um, I'll click the move tool and I'll be able to just like skew this as much as I want. If for some reason when you're resizing this text, it actually goes like this instead of like this, it's because you have um, this lock probably checked at the top. So when it's checked, when you're not holding down shift, it's going to size up and down and maintain the aspect ratio that you have. But when you have it um, unchecked, then it's gonna allow you to just like kind of free transform and, and skew it all that you want. And then when you hold down shift, that's when you can size it up and down and maintain that aspect ratio. So in this tutorial, you know, there's a lot of things that you can mess around with. You could switch up, you know, the contour of, of the uh, satin, you could change the, the gradients, you can change the colors. So there's lots of ways to experiment and I definitely recommend that you do that. If you wanna check out more tutorials, there's a lot more videos on this channel. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and check out fullermo.com if you're looking for some design tools to help elevate your graphics. I'll see you in the next video, peace.